Here's a pair of scissors. What's the lifespan of one of these? If you buy a quality instrument uh, from a reputable, a reputable company, well then really you're looking at, uh, to a certain extent, an unlimited uh, life on that item. Um, with good uh, care, um, looking after it, regular maintenance, sending off for sharpening and various things like this, well then it's not uncommon to have items or instruments in the um, supply chain for 20, 25 years. Understanding something of what happens to these products in a hospital is central to understanding an important part of the healthcare supply system. This is part of the internal supply chain. In Leeds General Infirmary, John is making one of the regular 30-minute collections of used surgical instruments from the operating theater suites. John is leaving the empty trolley to receive the next batch of soiled instruments contaminated with blood, bone fragments, and possibly infectious tissue. The loaded trolley is on its way to the sterile services department. This set has been used in the operating theatres. With this particular sort of uh, set, this is an ENT set. Uh, the equipment potentially is infected because it's been used on a patient. We don't know whether they've had any sort of medical uh, complaints. It's brought down in the rigid container and what Lynn is doing now is sorting the instrumentation out, opening the instruments up, putting them on uh, spikes or into a protective sort of ba basket and then what she'll do is she'll introduce the instruments into this basket which will go through the ultrasonic washer whereas for the container itself, because it's aluminium based, that will then go through the tunnel washer. From this department here, the HSVU at uh, Leeds General Infirmary, we supply 35 theatres with their equipment. Uh, if you're looking at it on a sort of a monthly sort of scale, we're looking at something like about 6,500 um, theatre trays, probably something like 35,000 individual instruments for the dental um, hospital. Uh, 13,000 linen packs and probably about uh, 25,000 uh, single items which could be for the theatres or for the wards. What we see here first of all is a rinse tank. What we have is the instruments going in there. They're contaminated with gross contamination, blood, tissue various uh, sort of products like that. Water at a tepid temperature, probably about 45 degrees centigrade, is being sprayed on them. That will get rid of the gross contamination that's on the equipment. If that water is any, is any hotter than that, what will happen is it will cause protein coagulation and will harden the materials on the instrument and then make the washing process that little bit harder. From the, the rinse, it will then go into the ultrasonic tank water at 85 degrees centigrade to which there is a, an enzyme detergent. Uh, a radio frequency wave is applied to the fluid and what that will do is it will cause uh, very minute bubbles to form in the water. The bubbles will grow at a sort of a set uh, sort of rate. They will then reach a critical size where they will implode. The implosion of the bubble in fact will uh, cause a scouring sort of action and that will draw the debris off the instruments. You'll see that uh, the process here is controlled by a robot arm and that will in fact move the baskets along at a set rate so that when we sort of talk to the staff in the production room and say that things have been sufficiently decontaminated, well then because we know the sort of parameters and the specifications that we're sure of our facts on that. From the ultrasonic bath it will then go into the decontamination or the disinfection bath. The ultrasonics will clean the equipment, the uh, decontamination bath will actually firmly disinfect the equipment. The third bath, this is where the instruments, they've been through the main part of the washing process, but they could still have some chemical detergent contaminates residual onto the instrumentation. So in there we do have um, hot water, which will very simply rinse any sort of contaminates off which are still on the instruments. At that stage we can also introduce a rinse aid 
to the uh, solution so that that will reduce any spotting or water stains on the instruments so that they will look all nice and shiny when they have actually passed through. The very last stage on the ultrasonic process is where the equipment is dried and very simply hot air is blown over the instrumentation for about five minutes to actually dry it before it is then passed through into the clean room. The whole process from going in um, dirty to coming out disinfected and passed through into the clean room takes about 25 minutes. Tracking the consignment is part of the quality system. If there's a problem, the hospital can trace when and on exactly which machine the batch was decontaminated. The next stage is carried out in a clean room, so clean that even the camera crew had to scrub up and wear gowns. We're now in the second uh, sort of department within the sterile services, and this is the clean room area. Whereas in the washroom, that's where the instrument sets came from the theatres, potentially infected, they've now been through an automated washing process. And because we know the various temperatures and the various sort of times that the instruments were in that sort of part of the cycle, well then we know that when they come in here, they're safe to handle by the staff because they've been thermally disinfected. And as you see, Maureen now has picked up a set which she has taken over to the workbench where she'll start um, preparing it and inspecting the instrumentation ready to be put into the completed container. Maureen will check all the instrumentation which is in that container, make sure that the contents of it are to the agreed levels. What that means is that with the users, they've come up with uh, a preferred contents for that particular set. She will make sure that all the instrumentation is clean, functional, sharp, and she will actually account for it in the container. She'll put it in the container and then she'll seal that using various sort of safety seals. And when she's happy with the container, she'll then take it round to the autoclave pre-hold area around the corner where it'll be held until there's an autoclave ready to actually process it. With the equipment checked and signed off, it then has to be packed for sterilization. You've already seen that B. Braun, as well as other manufacturers, offer a standard container suited for sterilization. Packing that with a microbiological filter and attaching heat-sensitive seals, which confirm that sterilization has been completed, is all that has to be done. To see what an advantage that is, contrast it with what has to be done to a non-packaged load. The outer layer is porous paper. It's there so that subsequent handling during transit doesn't affect the contents. The blue fabric is to contain any sharp corners or edges that could damage the integrity of the package. Double wrapping in green and blue porous paper follows a standard hospital procedure. The paperwork travels inside the wrapped parcel as well. At every layer, heat sensitive tape is used. This changes color to confirm the sterilization. Only now, labeled and wrapped, can the package continue to the next stage. The barcodes are still tracking the package. Eventually, one of these labels will be attached to the patient's notes. This is the sterilizer area. We've got a bank of four porous load autoclaves. The porous load indicates, in fact, that the sterilizers can pull a vacuum. And that's of critical importance down here because, as you've seen, most of the sets that we make up are, in fact, either wrapped or in containers. And what we must do is, in fact, take the air out of the chamber so that the steam can come in direct uh, contact with the instruments to achieve sterility. What we're trying to do is raise the temperature above 100 degrees centigrade, and so what we do is we seal a chamber 
uh, apply uh, heat to it and by pressurising it, well, then we can raise it above 100 degrees centigrade. To in fact kill spores, well, then we do have to raise the temperature quite high and these machines down here will raise the temperature to 134 degrees centigrade. 134 degrees centigrade for three and a half minutes, providing you've got air extraction, is sufficient to kill the bacteria that might be on any of the products that are going through the autoclaves. The whole process takes probably about 35 minutes from going in unsterile to actually coming out, shall we say, sterile and ready to use. Only now can the load, sterilized and ready for use, be taken off to the holding area outside the theatres. As a further sterile precaution, it's a separate transfer quite distinct from the collection of the used instruments. This care is one example of how the healthcare supply chain differs from sectors where human life is not the critical factor. One important tool of value engineering is the elimination of waste and duplication. If you work closely with your suppliers and can trust them, you can save on inward inspection, relying on the supplier to have done the job for you. Even in the best circumstances, that can't be relied on in healthcare. Like a lot of trusts, we actually um, hire equipment uh, to come into the trust so that it can be used for one-off operations. Um, because we don't really know where this equipment has been previously used, we don't know what the state of it is, um, irrespective of what the, shall we say, the company says or the representative says, or in the case of a hospital owner's equipment, we treat everything suspect. So even if you come to me and say this is sterile, this is clean, whatever, well then we'll say yes and we'll still in fact process it through the normal sort of run. So it'll go through the washing machines, it'll still be rechecked um, in the packing room and it'll still go through the steriliser uh, for use by the clinician before uh, we allow anything else to go on. Decontamination and sterilization units are only a small part of the total healthcare supply chain. In the next section, we'll take a broader view.